This video describes Elson's test as well as a simple modification which can be used for the diagnosis of central slip injuries of the extensor tendon overlying the proximal interphalangeal joint. Here you see a patient who sustained a laceration over their PIP. It's short but fairly deep. The patient is asked to flex their injured PIP at 90 degrees over a table or other 90 degree surface. The patient is then asked to extend the PIP joint against resistance. The job of the examiner is to notice not just their PIP extension strength, but also whether there's activation of extension at the DIP joint, which is abnormal. This is because the extensor tendon overlying the PIP joint is not just a single tendon, but actually a network of tendons composed of a central slip as well as two lateral bands. If the central slip is lacerated, those lateral bands can then migrate in a volar direction and become extensors at the distal interphalangeal joint. So let's take a look at Elson's test one more time. Absent or weakened extension at the PIP joint coupled with fixed extension at the distal interphalangeal joint comprises a positive Elson's test, a sign of a central slip rupture. If you find this difficult to perform, a modification of Elson's test was described in the British Journal of Hand Therapy in 2006. This test is a test of symmetry. The patient takes the injured finger and places it as pictured, pushing against the matching finger of the contralateral hand. When the central slip is intact, it has a check rein effect on the lateral bands, preventing them from becoming activated, and therefore resulting in a semi-flexed and floppy distal phalanx, as pictured here. In an abnormal test, when there is an injury to the central slip, what you might instead see is asymmetry as pictured here. As depicted by the cartoon drawing, when the central slip is injured, those lateral bands can now migrate in a volar direction and act as extensors at the distal phalanx. Central slip injuries are very important injuries for the emergency physician and acute care practitioner to detect. That's because missing these injuries can result in the delayed consequence of formation of the boutonniere's deformity, as pictured here. Once the boutonniere's deformity has occurred, it can be very difficult for even an experienced hand surgeon to fix. To learn more about this injury and other techniques in wound care, visit www.lacerationrepair.com.